Okay, so this video is going to take you through some aspects of waves that can be measured. Uh, and the things you need to know how to label and how to measure are the amplitude, the wavelength, the period, and the frequency of the wave. What kind of waves are we talking about? We're talking about waves that go from one place to another. So here, uh, I've got a wave that is moving along a rope or a bit of string or something. So if I... Here we go. So here's a bit of rope or a bit of string or a bit of something. And if I jiggle one end of it up and down, a wave gets passed along the rope or the, str or the string. If I jiggle it up and down like this, ooh, I can send a wave along the rope. Now, in reality, if you try this with an actual bit of rope, if you lay a bit of rope, a long bit of rope on the floor, and you jiggle it from side to side, um, probably you'll have a lot more damping. So it will probably look, I've just adjusted a parameter, probably it would look more like this. If you waved a bit of rope, the wave wouldn't get to the end. It would die out because the, the rope would be um, experiencing friction uh, as it slid around on the floor. Um, but for the purposes of this, I'm going to have a continuous wave with nothing, nothing, no resistive forces, no damping. So here we go. We've got a little machine jiggling this bit of rope up and down and we're watching a wave go along it. Now, it's worth taking the time, I'll post a link to this in the um, in the description to the video, but it's worth just reminding yourself that waves transfer energy and information without transferring matter. So if you look at any individual green blob on this rope, you'll notice that it doesn't move from left to right. The wave appears to be moving across the screen from left to right, clearly, but if you look at any individual part of the rope, it oscillates up and down, up and down, up and down. That's it. It doesn't actually move from left to right. So that means this is a transverse wave because the oscillations of bits of the rope are up and down and the oscillation that's causing it is up and down, but the motion of the wave is from left to right. So they're at right angles. Anyway, what are all these different bits and bobs? We've got amplitude, wavelength, period and frequency. Well, we can get them from different things. One thing we can do is analysis of a wave snapshot, like a photograph. So if you just froze the screen, which I can do with this, so if I just press pause, I can freeze the, uh, the screen. I can freeze the wave. Certain analysis can be done from that. So if we draw something like this, maybe I'll do a little bit more. Here we go. We can get certain things from having a snapshot of the wave. Now you'll notice over here, this has got some dotted lines on it. There's one orange dotted line which is really useful. That's a dotted line that goes through the middle of the wave. That's where the rope was before it started being jiggled. And also, there's another dotted line that I can move here, this red one. Okay. Now this one here is for helping us to measure the height or the amplitude of the wave. So the first thing on our list of things you need to know how to measure is the amplitude of the wave. That's the height of the wave, but measured from the middle point. Okay. So if we label that on our diagram here, the amplitude is the height of the wave measured from the middle point. And you'll see that my sketch of a wave here was pretty awful because the amplitude isn't the same everywhere and I would like it to be. So be a bit more careful when you sketch your wave. So the height of the wave measured from the middle is called the amplitude. Okay, The height of the wave, the amplitude, you can find that from having a snapshot of the wave and then just measuring it with a ruler. Now this one's a scale drawing uh, but they've provided us with a ruler for measuring the amplitude. So if I put the zero on the orange dotted line, which is the middle, it looks like the amplitude of this is basically one centimetre on this scale diagram. So on this scale diagram, the height of my wave, the amplitude is one centimetre. Now you're welcome to measure from the bottom of a trough to the midpoint and you should get the same answer of one centimetre. So the amplitude there should be the same as the amplitude there. It isn't in my diagram because I was a bit careless and I should have drawn it a little more carefully. So that's the amplitude. That's the first thing you need to know. In this case, the amplitude is measured in centimetres or metres from this photographic snapshot. But other waves, the amplitude could be measured in different things. So a sound wave uh, 
you could be looking at the pressure in different places so then your amplitude might be in terms of pressure so amplitude can have a number of different units but it's always the height of a wave from the midpoint now what's the other thing uh, we can measure we can measure the length of a wave how long the wave is so this wave at the moment uh, looks like this if I change something here if I change the frequency I can make a wave that looks different and some some feature of it of the snapshot has changed so this snapshot looks different to let's let it go through this snapshot what looks different about those snapshots the wave has been stretched out or squished up and how long or short a single wave is is called the wavelength so the length of the wave look how awful my wave is I'm tempted to even draw it again because it's so awful maybe I will that might just be a little bit better okay so now the amplitude is a bit more constant now my line here for my wavelength isn't going to be so terrible so this here is the wave length which has the symbol lambda that's a Greek letter lambda that's the standard symbol for wavelength so the, the wavelength is the distance from one peak to another peak it's also the distance from one trough to another trough it's also the distance from here we go look, this is about right from uh, a midpoint crossing to another like midpoint crossing so this is a midpoint crossing going down this is a midpoint crossing going down that's also the wavelength you can measure the wavelength in any of those places um, so from a snapshot of the wave we can get the amplitude and the wavelength now if I go back to this one we can measure the wavelength if I go from a peak to a peak we can get an idea so if I go from this peak to this peak it's about one two three four five six so it's about five point what are each of these little small increments one two three four five each of those is point two so it's about five point two four six five point seven should we call it centimeters the wavelength of this now wavelength does always have units of length unlike amplitude which can be complicated the wavelength always has units of meters or centimeters or kilometers or something like that um, now it's worth noting that if you're asked to label a diagram and you're asked to label the amplitude of the, or the wavelength you've got to do it as accurately as you can okay so if I get rid of these which are good okay and draw some that are not good you'll see the difference if a, if you get given a diagram like this and you're asked to label the, the wavelength if you just do that and call that the wavelength you're almost certainly not going to get the mark because it's not the wavelength that's less than the wavelength what I suggest you do is possibly even draw in some lines so you're going exactly from the middle of that peak to exactly from the middle of that peak and your wavelength goes all the way from one to the other within a millimeter of accuracy at each end and call that the wavelength that's going to get you the mark so when you're drawing these arrows you've got to be really careful to draw exactly from the point you want to exactly from the point you want the same applies to the amplitude if you do that in an exam and you don't label it accurately you're going to lose the mark so from a snapshot of a wave we can get the wavelength measured in meters we can get the amplitude which could be measured in all sorts of things okay that's good but we've got two more things because whoops we've got the amplitude and the wavelength we also need to know the period and frequency now the period and the frequency you can't get from a snapshot it's impossible uh, so you have to do an analysis of a moving wave then we can get the period and the frequency so let's get this thing going again and I might speed it up a bit so it's going a bit quicker okay now the waves going a bit quicker we can analyze the period and the frequency now the period of a wave is the time period which has the symbol T is the time unbelievable wait there apologies for that interruption that was the fire alarm test uh, now period T is the time for one wave 
to pass a point, um, which is quite hard to measure. So often we'll measure the time for 10 waves to, to pass a point uh, and then divide it by 10. So <coughs> if I make the point that I'm interested in, maybe the sun, if you have a look at the, at the, at the sun out of the window, okay, as a peak goes past there, I'll, I'll start the timer and then I'll count 10 more peaks and we'll see how long that takes. From that we can, we can work out the time for one wave. So ready, steady, go. Oh, I missed the button. Can you believe it? Go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, fifteen point three five seconds. So if we say ten waves was 15 point, was it 3.5 seconds, therefore the time for one wave, which is the period, is that divided by 10, which is 1.535 seconds. So the period is the time for one wave to go past, and it's measured almost always in seconds. What is the frequency? The frequency is the number of waves passing a point per second. number of waves passing a point per second. Full stop. Um, now there's one way we can work that out from the period, but I don't know if I'll introduce that here. So there's a formula, formula that links period and frequency. But we can try and measure the frequency. It's going to be impossible for us to do the number of waves passing a point per second, but we could do the number of uh, waves passing a point in like, I don't know, 20 seconds or something, and then divide it by 20. So if I go start, and then 1, 2, 3, feel free to fast forward the video, 4, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, 13 it was when I got to 20 seconds. So if there are 13 waves in 20 seconds, how many waves are there per second? Well, it's 13 divided by 20, which is 1.3 divided by 2, which is 0 0.65, I believe, hertz. Now, the unit for frequency is hertz. Hertz means per second. So waves per second. 0.65 hertz means 0.65 waves per second. So this is not a good way of doing it, by the way. The way I've done here in green is not a good way of doing it. You're better off measuring the period here and then using a formula to find the frequency. That's the better way of doing it. But this gives you an intuitive feel for what the frequency is. So the frequency is the number of waves passing a point per second. The period is the amount of time it takes for one wave to pass a point. The wavelength is the physical length of a wave from a peak to a peak or a trough to a trough, measured in meters. And the amplitude is the height of a wave measured from the midpoint. Two of these things can be found from a snapshot, a photographic snapshot. Two of the things have to be found from an analysis of a, of a moving wave or from some extra information. So I hope that's a, a simple introduction. I recommend you have a little play around with this applet which I'll post the link to, uh, and hopefully that's a good introduction to basic wave measurements.